the U.S. with the sea and to hold joint naval drills near South China Sea. The China-S rivalry in the South China Sea is certainly growing, but war is still some way off. No one doubts that the military competition and frictions are real. And Syria is between China and the United States and the South China Sea. When they have rivalrous intentions, tit for tat strategies, and daily operational confrontations. China is accused of coercing the U.S. allies and partners, militarizing disputed features, and seeking regional hegemony. And the United States is considered to be playing the South China Sea card and containing China's rise as a maritime power. In the context of overall intensified strategic competition between the two countries, the South China Sea is even less likely to be an exception. But the question remains, how fierce will the competition be, when every day is filled with news of maritime standoffs between China and the United States? Many may wonder, will China and the US slip into military conflict? Both sides have reasons to maintain and expand their military presence in the South China Sea. China is the largest littoral state of the South China Sea, and has important interests at stake. Territorial sovereignty, jurisdictional waters, and sea lanes of communication. With China's military modernization, it is natural that more and more military platforms are active in the area. Meanwhile the United States thinks highly of maritime predominance, freedom of navigation, and security commitments to regional states. Thus, since the end of World War II, the United States has maintained the most powerful military presence and executed a variety of complex military operations in the South China Sea. For a long time after World War II, due to China's weak naval and air forces, there were not many chances for Chinese and American military forces to encounter each other at sea. However, much has changed in the past decade. On the one hand, China's capacity has rapidly increased, and the progress of the Navy and Air Force is particularly impressive. On the other hand, the United States has grown increasingly worried about China's rising power, and significantly strengthened its naval and air presence since 2009. US aircraft's already increased by 100% to about 1,500, and surface ship presence increased by 60% to around 1,000 ship days per year. In this context, frequent military to military encounters are inevitable. Neither side is comfortable with the changing situation. The U.S. military is used to being unparalleled and unchallengeable in the South China Sea and is not ready to accommodate China's maritime rise. Although the People's Liberation Army is already very strong materially, it is still a novice spiritually and in the process of learning how to interact with its American counterparts as a mature power. But neither side seems to have much to offer other than peaceful coexistence. If both sides develop normally, in terms of power, the future of the South China Sea would be a bipolar region. Regardless what kind of intentions they have. Moreover, most countries in the region are reluctant to take sides in the China's power competition. Therefore, it is hard for either side to re-establish a dominant order here. As the power distribution becomes more balanced, the idea of a managed military conflict is fanciful. One side's provocation will inevitably invite the other's retaliation, where spiral escalation is highly possible. Considering that both sides have so many weapon platforms, and both are major nuclear powers, the feasibility of a military solution has greatly diminished.
The China's rivalry in the South China Sea is certainly growing, but war is still some way off. There are several maritime encounters between the two sides every day, and thousands every year. Most of them are professional and safe, only if you have involved some risks. The recent pandemic has made both countries and militaries more sensitive. Which to some extent, has heightened the tension of the situation. Because of COVID-19, China and the United States are more concerned and anxious about each other. In addition to maintaining daily operations in the Western Pacific, both sides have some new worries. The United States is concerned that China would take advantage of the temporary power vacuum. Thus it has deliberately shown more force and given China more diplomatic pressure. China feels that Washington's South China Sea policy is increasingly desperate to the point that even during the pandemic, the United States has not forgotten to provoke China. Beijing is also convinced that the US, motivated by power competition, is focusing on China's activities and ignoring the actions of other claimants. From mid-April to early May, the U.S. Navy dispatched several warships, including USS America LHA-6, to the so-called standoff area between the Haiyang Z-8 and the West Capella to deter China's operations. The People's Liberation Army Navy was believed to have a similar number of warships there at the same time, which aroused heated discussion among the media and experts.